Hey everybody, DLMW664 Productions here, and today I'll be showing you how to maintain and clean some HO scale equipment. So let's get into it. Alright, now the first thing I'm going to show you how to clean is some very neglected HO scale track. I'm not very good at cleaning my HO scale track for the simple reason that I only had my expired rubbing alcohol and that worked fine, but it didn't really shine up the track. So I got a Lionel track eraser at the train show and here's the difference. This is with the track eraser, this is without the track eraser. Need I say much more? But anyways, the way how you use it is you just take the track eraser, move it back and forth, just like this, applying pressure, and before you know it, you'll have some really, really clean track. Just like that, shiny. Anyways, that's enough track for now. Let's get to locomotives. Alright, this first locomotive is a lifelike Jeep 38. I already removed the handles as seen right here. So the way you take these things apart, if I'm remembering correctly, is you take your screwdriver, which is a pretty obvious step one, and you unscrew these screws that go into the locomotive. And again, so long as I'm remembering correctly, this fuel tank or the frame itself should, yep, just like that, it pops right off. Now, unfortunately, last time I put this together, I got a wire lodged underneath the plastic plates that are the glass in the locomotive. So, I had to remove that. But, nice and simple. I'll put these off to the side so that I don't lose them, like I always do. Now, these lifelikes are quite simple engines, and actually, in my opinion, they're not given as much as they should be. They're nice engines. They have some decent detail. They're not horrible. They're not great. You get what you pay for. And that's something I could appreciate. So opening the engine up, here's a gear with a lot of dog hair. And that's why I need to do maintenance on these probably once or so every week. Anyways, continue removing it and don't lose the brushings or the springs because you'll never get them back. If you do, it'll be very, very, very hard to get them back. All right, and remove that nice and carefully. Out comes the spring. Now comes the brushing, just like that. And then the same thing to the other side. And now you're free to maneuver with this. Move these screws and that will get you access into this part of the motor. Just don't strip the screws out like I almost did. There we go, move that. And if everything works, you should be able to just separate the two parts of the locomotive. Don't do that. I'm gonna go get those pieces. Okay, so there's good news and bad news. The bad news is I couldn't find the last couple of gears that went to the motor assembly. The good news is I have a spare motor assembly off of my Burlington Northern F unit. This is also lifelike and it was also used as my Christmas tree topper. So it's my parts engine. Anyways, time to do the same thing all over again, which I won't bore you through. First I have to get that wheel. All right, so good news and bad news. The bad news is I could not find the gears that went with this. The good news is 
I was able to get gears out of this, which came out of my Burlington Northern F unit. So, seeing as that BNF unit was already in pretty horrible shape, I took the gears, which were in good shape, and cleaned those up. What I'm going to do now is just clean off some of the excess gunk from the motor using my Q-tips. Put those right over there and clean off the panel that covers up the motor. So clean off all this extra gunk. And before you know it, just like magic, everything's ready to be put back together. So what you do is you take your larger gears, put those in like that, and I will go over all of these with oil before I finish putting all the big gears on. Just like that, everything should rotate nice and smoothly. Take your smaller gears, pop those in, just like that, and then grab your oil. One, two, three, four, and then I'll put a little bit of oil on here so that I don't have to lubricate that later. And this actually looks all right. I don't think I'm gonna have to clean this up. So I'll put this right back on here. And just like that, I could rotate it and everything's working good. So uh, seeing as I won't really have to put much oil cause I have grease that is a bit too heavy. So maybe I'll just take a tiny bit on my finger, just like that and rub it on just to get it so that there's some there. Now you could reassemble the motor. That's pretty much the reverse of assembling it. You take it, snap it all together, and it's a lot easier. You don't have to worry about parts flying everywhere. Anyways, Take all that stuff, I'm gonna put the screws back in, put the wheels back in, and then we'll test this locomotive and see how well it performs. Okay, one quick thing. Before I run the engine, I know it's a lot of delays, but I have to clean these wheels because they're in a lot worse shape than I thought they were originally in. So I'll just take my track eraser and go over the wheels with them, just quite simple. Then I get to run the engine. So I'll go do the rest of this off camera. It's quite simple. Just run the track eraser on the wheels, get to spots, and hopefully it'll run. So next clip I'll show you is of the engine actually running, finally. All right, so I finished up the locomotive. The only thing I have to do is put the handrails on. But for now, I'm just going to put it on the track and see if it even works. This engine goes really fast, even with the gear reductions and it pulls the track apart. I'm gonna get some metal twisty ties and tie the tracks together like I have done right here. So, it should work, but for now, this is what I have, so it's what I'm using. And it goes really fast and it works really good, so on to the next engine, which will be the River Rossi. Okay, so this next engine I'm working on is the River Rossi. I took this thing apart and there's five screws, two in the back, two in the front, and one where the nose is. So I got all of those out and they're all underneath the engine. I took the rear truck off and since the both trucks are identical, I'm only going to show you one of them. Now there's dog hair all over the place in this truck and wheel set. Reason being, I have a dog and it sheds a lot. Okay, so now that I have everything all cleaned up with this wheel set, I'm going to put the cover back on, put the screws back in, if they feel like cooperating, of course, and put them in, quite simple, and 
quite easy. Now putting these trucks back into the locomotive itself is a bit of an interesting art. Just like that. Got to make sure all the wheels rotate and rotate the uh, end a tiny bit. You can put this back on and since there's already plenty of oil in there, I don't think I'll bother to grease this thing up. Maybe a little bit just for just to make sure it's running good. Tiny bit in there. That's way more than a tiny bit. So what I'll do is I'll take my screwdriver, dunk that in the oil, and spread it into the other one. Now there's a couple of ways you could put this in. You could take the little drive axle, put it into the engine, and then put the whole entire thing back into place, which is quite easy. Or you could put the rod into the truck and then back it into there. But one thing you're going to have to do regardless is make sure that rod's in there. You're also going to have to put this back through and make sure it doesn't stick out otherwise the frame won't sit back down on the locomotive. But it's the same process for the other truck and once I get that done I'll show the engine running. All right, moment of truth. And it runs just fine, it just derailed. Because this is up. But it's running just fine, so I guess we'll qualify that as success. Anyways, for now, this is DLNW664 Productions signing off.